I've always wanted my own full-size arcade machine at home, but they were always too expensive and out of reach. So I first looked on YouTube to see what other people were doing, also checked some links in Google, and I finally decided that this was something that I could build. I decided to make the machine in two parts. This makes it so much easier to get it from the garage to my basement. I want to take this time to thank Brian from the Smuggler's Room for providing the Greeblies used on the arcade. You'll see more on that later. I want to thank We Build Stuff for pointing me in the right direction for the router bit used for the T-molding installation. And I want to thank GeekPub. Between their tutorials and We Build Stuff tutorials, I was able to have the confidence to put this machine together. They also have a whole bunch of different things to buy if you want to make an arcade system for yourself, such as coin doors, the controllers, etc. I'll have links for these guys down in the description below. Freshly primed. Now I could have cut these holes on the CNC, but this was an afterthought. As I looked back at the cabinet, I thought, how can I add some Greeblies to this? Because you know, Greeblies need to be added to everything, right? And so, the war within myself began, and, well, here I am cutting holes in a perfectly good cabinet. This is an idea that I saw on GeekPub. Basically, you make a template using something like Inkscape, print it out, and there you have it. A perfect guide for drilling your holes. Well, I wasn't as accurate as I would have liked, but once you paint it black, you can hardly tell.
here's how it looks with all the wires connected. So each side gets a controller board. These wires go straight to the joystick. The next wires would be the B1 through B12 ground and 5 volts. We'll start with the ground and 5 volts. Now those wires are daisy chained from one set of buttons to the next and the next and the next. They go to the red connector on the board. This is how the buttons get power. The opposite set of wires are used for B1 through B12. And basically they're just directly plugged into the board here. The blue side has the exact same setup. And both sides are plugged to your computer with a USB cable. Onto the trackball, the yellow and black wire are used to power the LED. I've spliced these wires with one of the button's LED power wires. Once powered on, the LED will cycle through all the colors. Now you'll see a ton of other wires, but they're not needed for this type of setup. The only thing you'll need to plug in is, again, another USB cable. I also spliced in the green and white wires from the coin returns. Now those are connected to the buttons that I've dubbed coin. So you could press the button or you could donate and uh, drop a quarter in there. On the back side we have the VESA mount for the monitor. We have some cable management. I know OCD was in full effect this day. I've also added a Bluetooth receiver so I can play music while I game. Up top I had a pair of old speakers laying around so I just used those. I picked up the light from a local home improvement store and that's used to light up the marquee. You don't need a souped up gaming PC to run the emulators. In fact, some people use Raspberry Pis. I use an application called LaunchBox. It's basically a front end for all your emulators and ROMs. This front end automatically downloads the game box art, all the information about the games. It's really cool. LaunchBox is free, but they have a paid premium version that comes with something called Big Box, which I'm displaying here. As far as ROMs are concerned, can't really tell you where to get those, but I'm sure you're clever enough to figure that out on your own. That's it for the inside of the cabinet. Now let's go back to sprucing up the exterior. I decided to take off the wheels and go with adjustable feet. You know, just in case maybe the cabinet wasn't quite level and I needed to adjust for that. Luckily I realized the error of my ways early and I painted the rest of the bases first with the acrylic, then added the Greeblies. It's amazing how well the mine works after coffee has been introduced. I only wish I had some black spray paint, that would have made this process a lot easier. See what I did there? Oh, nothing clever. Just, uh, the paint was a little too watered down, so after several attempts, I finally got the consistency right.
Okay, that'll do. They, they look okay, I think. Maybe. I'll be adding LEDs all around the arcade through the Greeblies. Now I chose this style because it has the LED circuitry that allows them to flash like this and also has the capacitor built in. This means all I have to do is plug in a power source. All right, one light down and eight more to go. One last step was to use my Cricut to make the letters for the buttons. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed building it. I tried to list everything down below, but if I've missed anything, let me know in the comments. Now I know what you're thinking. This guy is alright. I'm gonna subscribe to his channel. And you would be right to do that. And to those who have already subscribed, I knew you were cool. See you next time.